This is your main man, RJ, from the Ringside Rant, heard only on the Visionaries Wrestling Network. So go over and subscribe across all your major platforms, iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and Stitcher, to hear every great interview I have every Monday on the Visionaries Wrestling Network. Go over and follow the show's page on Twitter, at underscore Ringside Rant. Follow the network's page, at BizWrestleNet. And, as always... Embrace the vision. Hello, friends. This is Spencer Love, your host of Over the Top Rope on the Wind Column Sports Network. Don't forget you can head to windcolumnsports.ca for all of your previews, reviews, and breaking news from the world of wrestling, be it your major promotions or from the great province of Alberta, Canada. Now, back to Sounds of Struggle with your hosts, Chris Parrish and Manaya. Episode 95 of The Sounds of Struggle. I'm Chris Parrish. I'm a repeating Sergey Verizon. <laughs> Look it up. 29 games. Montreal Canadiens. 2001-2002 season. It happened. For the Montreal Canadiens. Da Habs. L'habitant. Ah, who am I kidding? I'm Matt Duchesne. <laughs> He's probably the most famous one. Or Alexei Mor- Morozov. Morozov? Whatever. Penguins guy. 99 to 04. 98 to 04. Okay. I'm Duchesne. Dufresne. I don't know why I'm thinking it's Shawshank now. I don't know why you're thinking of Andy Dufresne. Because it's a good movie, that's why. Never seen it. It's fantastic. Mm, I'll take your word for it. Actually, that's a lot. I've seen the first half and I fell asleep. It is a long movie. A very long movie. But it's terrific. You know what's not long? Morgan Freeman's in it. Um, well, Dinah. Well, we could go with... I'm sure our <laughs> listeners know it's not long. Their attention span. Let's move on! Yeah. Why would it be when you're listening to this? Very true. Squirrel! Anyways, hockey. Crawford might be coming back! Ah! He's still on the IR right now. As of right now, but they're looking hopeful, optimistic for a potential end of October return. Yeah. Isn't that what we said, though? I don't know. The last time we talked about him was so goddamn long ago. Yeah. It was last season. I said he he's either done for sure or he'll be back probably at some point next season. I would say we probably talked about that. Probably. Also want to point out that uh, from last week, Shea Theodore, as soon as we finished talking about him, like an hour later, he signed. Yeah. He signed with the Golden Knights for seven years, $36.4 million dollar contract. Like 5.2 a year, roughly. Yeah, Brandon Davidson also signed a one year $650,000 contract with the Blackhawks. Now he has to get a new number, yes. Wait, because he was wearing 88 all the time. I'm sure if he asked nicely, he'd give it up. I'm sure if he paid for a cab ride, he might get it. Yeah, well, he'd get something. Um, let's see what else. Uh, do we want to go into what you were talking about uh, last week, or what we talked about earlier? It's about the, the well, captains and whatnot. Well, yeah, we. I was kind of taking a little squamish over the uh, the NHL teams, and I noticed at the time there was nine teams that didn't have a captain. At the time. At the time, and four of those nine were original six, and I thought that that one was a little bit more surprising because I think personally. If you're a proud franchise, you should always have a captain. If you're Especially the original six. Yeah. And it's very rare we see an original six team go without a captain. Unless you're Toronto Maple Leafs last, well, since Dion Phaneuf left. Yeah. But, I mean, that one, I think, is the most understandable because you're just going to prime Austin Matthews. Yeah, I guess. 
Um, I honestly think when as, as soon as Austin Matthews signs this big extension after his uh, entry level deal, they'll give him the C. They'll okay. make that big announcement all together. Oh. Wow. Um, but then I looked at Montreal and I was like, oh man, that one's kind of just an, almost more embarrassing because um, I can't see Montreal not go with that, without a captain. But you know what? They did announce, and it was who I said, Shea Weber. Yeah. Which, you know, he's only the thirtieth cap here, and their entire history that that's not bad. Yeah. That's... It takes over the reins of one Max Pacioretty, who was named captain in Vegas. No. No, it was. But he is an alternate, I believe. As of right now. Yeah. The alternates in Montreal were uh, Gallagher, Gallagher, and Byron. Byron. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Toronto's actually doing. What are they doing? Like four alternates. Yeah. They'll have Riley, Tavares. Uh, help me out. I think Marlowe has one. Yeah. Marlowe has one. Uh, Riley has one. Tavares has one. Maybe Kadri. I don't know. Who the I think Kadri does have one. I'm not, I'm not sure who the For fourth now. is. Which I don't understand. Okay, a... here's the thing. As much as people are saying that Wilson guy is an idiot, which I agree, and he should get a good good little uh, suspension for his hit. Oh, we're going off that off talk about Okay. Well, no, no, no. I'm just saying, like, Hodgery, that guy's a piece of shit, too. That guy, so, I mean, if people want to shit on Marshawn for being an agitator, then give me a break. Yeah, Ca- I agree. Caudry's ten times worse. Um... Sticking with the captain thing, we all said Vegas, no captain. Um, uh, I but, think honestly, it could go to Patrick either like next year, not this yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, year. I honestly, uh, I Stanley wouldn't be surprised if even Theodore got him. Uh, actually, Derek England, he's from Vegas, but I also uh, a Nate Schmidt when he's healthy could also very well <laughs> when he's healthy, not serving a suspension. But, but here's the thing with England, I don't think he'll stay with the team for that long. Um, they even might give it to William Carlson if he signs a long-term deal. I think he has an A now. Yeah. Um, who else do we have? Uh, oh, the original six, we have Rangers in Detroit. Yeah. I think Larkin gets it for Detroit. I, I think Larkin is an eventual one for Detroit. Which, oh. on a side note, completely unrelated except for the Larkin thing. Yeah. I just did a fantasy draft for the year. And Larkin, one of the names not picked up. Same with Carter, same with Stahl. That's the beauty of having ten teams. There are so many people on the uh, waiver wire. Waiver wire that I can just, I can just do whatever. <laughs> um. Well, yeah. I mean, that happens with football too. I think you have ten teams. I mean, there's just a plethora of guys you can choose from, and then you still look big. Like, oh, that guy's available. Of course, he's available. You don't have enough teams. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then when we go with the New York Rangers, it's actually kind of a kind of interesting to see like you know like who could be the captain on that i mean i look i mean you you could go chris Kreider, i guess could mm. be an idea shattenkirk could be a possible shattenkirk i would say would probably be more like uh zuccarello he's maybe he's been like a heart and soul kind of guy yeah. for a while there um so i mean I'm not too sure right now i believe the a's are on Kreider, Stahl, and Zuccarello as of right now. Yeah. So, um, I think they might stay away from a defenseman, seeing how the last two were defensemen. Yes. And Girardi and McDonough. So, um, I don't know. That's just my thought. Um, sorry. I got distracted there. My father-in-law just texts saying, check your social media. So I check this and the first thing I see is a picture of a Leafs uniform with a C on it. It was Doug Gilmore doing a charity game. So I scrolled down one and it's a very very sexy picture of Chelsea Green. I don't think he's talking about those but I'm going to pretend he is. <laughs> that's funny. Um, Stayed on topic. Staying... It was kind of on topic. Yeah. Um, uh, who else we have there? So We, we talked... have Buffalo. But not, Buffalo. Not in a... Eichel. Yeah. Whether it's this year or next year, it's going to be Eichel. Yeah. Uh, as long as he figures out what number he wants to continue with. Nine. Yeah. Nine! Um, um, we the, talk, you talked about the... What about Vancouver? Vancouver announced four alternates today. No one cares. Um, I believe one was Brandon Sutter. Another one was Alexander Edler. 
a third was Bo Horvat, and I think Chris Tenev was the fourth. I think really? Bo, I think Bo Horvat will eventually get it. I could see that, but really, no, uh, yeah. no Erickson. That's surprising. Yeah. How about that? Um, and how about Ottawa? I think nobody knows what that identity to that team is. Um, who's still there? Hoffman left, right? Yeah, Hoffman uh, got traded. Who's tra- number sixty-eight? Stone. Yeah, Mark Stone. He might. Oh uh, well, that's there's him. There's Duchesne. Duchesne could have a C, yeah. Um, they have Cody CC. I mean, you can't CC me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about those C's, huh? Exactly, it's three C's. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I think that this is definitely going to be a team where they're going to try to figure out who the, who they are. Yeah. Um, and then the rest of the world is still going to wonder if the city still knows that they have a hockey team. Yeah, maybe if they take out like ten thousand shares, then the rest of them will be filled. Yeah. Probably not, but. Um, so, so out of the nine, okay, we've talked about Montreal. We've yeah. talked about Vegas. We've yeah. talked about Vancouver. Yeah. We've talked about Buffalo. Yeah. The Rangers yep. and Leafs. and the Leafs, so that would be the seven. We're missing two more. Detroit, we also yeah. talked about, so that'd be the eight. And I believe there was a one last. The one. T- hint for the team, they put out a terrible jersey that looks like a practice yeah. jersey. The New York Islanders. It looks disgusting. Um. Yeah, that one's gonna be interesting. Um, I could see Barzil maybe one day get an A or a C down the road, though. Not I really mean, they got a couple of defensemen that are uh, fair. Bailey could get a C. Yeah. He's been there for a while. I mean, that Dahan guy has been there for a while. Calvin Dahan, yeah. Um, Nick Letty. Yep. That's a possibility. Wait, where's Boychuk right now? I think he's still there, but I don't, I don't know if he's going to be playing for very long. Though. Yeah. Um, and then anybody who's saying Eberle, just also take into account he's a UFA after this year. Unless he returns, which he might, he might not. Who knows? Yeah. I don't think he should be captain, though. No, alternate maybe, but not a captain. Well, I mean, he's, he's been what seven years now in the league, seven or eight years in the league now. So, something like that, yeah. Maybe, maybe even nine. I think maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll call it Mrs. Benai. She'd know. Um, no, it would be uh, I think it's seven or eight now. His when was uh. Paul's first year, because that was his first year. Was he like, got back eight years. This would be his eighth year, I guess. No, ninth. I think it could be ninth. Yeah, because he got, I, he got I, drafted the year before Hall, but his first year was with Hall. Yeah, so I think he had his three-year entry level and then a six-year deal. Yeah. So this could be his ninth season. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, but that's it for that. Yeah. How about an update from Seattle? Yeah. And... Why are we talking about hockey and Seattle? Because they might have an expansion team. Yeah. And by might, I mean they're one step closer to being the 32nd franchise. Yeah, they're one vote away that is actually happening in December. A formal vote will take place in December for with the Board of Governors meeting. And if that uh, goes through and they pass, by 2020-2021, we could see a team in Seattle. Uh, Batman actually said the plan right now is to make sure that there is a puck drop in Seattle 2020. That's the hope. That'd be cool. Um, so, I think maybe next week what we could do... Actually, maybe we should wait for the vote to happen. Yeah, and then we'll go through who we who and each then, team would... We'll... Yeah, and then we'll do a little fun... Which, keep in mind, still a couple, couple years away, so, I mean, the teams could obviously yeah. change but well I mean I mean just look at uh the last time uh Ottawa protected uh their teams for the Vegas thing about almost 80 percent of that team is either uh been traded signed somewhere else or no longer there in some capacity yeah so that's very true I mean that was only two years ago crazy how time flies eh? right uh, speaking of time flying, EA Sports has released the results of the simulated season, yeah. discussing who they think is going to win the cup. And you know why I don't believe that? Because it's the Leafs. And the Sharks. Well, the Sharks made it to the finals once. Yeah. So what they have for the sports simulation is... I don't even have the Oilers in there. Another reason why I don't. Oh, well, the Oilers are in it. 
Well, one, the one of them. One of them. They're not in the playoffs. Stanley Cup winner is the Leafs yeah. beating the, uh, as we said, the San Jose Sharks. Yeah, and but, but also they picked them in seven. I also don't believe San Jose has it in them to go seven games in the finals. Fair enough. Uh, Consumize the winner being Tavares. Yeah. The Hart Trophy, Ted Lindsay, and Art Ross winner, all McJesus. Yes. Yeah, now, here's the thing. Wasn't it a thing this year where McDavid didn't get the heart because his team didn't make the playoffs? Man, you're speculating on an EA Sports simulation. I'm just saying, if it's in the game, it better be damn well believable. Well, he should have won last year, but I mean, what do I know? I know. Uh, Rocket Richard winner is Patrick Laine. Right. Norris winner is a newly sharked up Carlson. See, the one I do believe is the uh, Maurice Richard Trophy. I do I, think that, I, that one's very... I still think that uh, Carlson can win the Norris. Yeah. Um, but I also think that there is an Euler that could very well win the, the Maurice Richard Trophy. Like Jesus? I think he definitely could. Um, it's possible. Mm-hmm. Definitely possible. Vezin Trophy winner was Bobrovsky. Yeah, which should uh, give him a nice little pay raise. You think? Seeing how he's also a UFA after this season. And the Calder is, obvious reasons, Dolan. Mm-hmm. Well, I shouldn't say obvious because it sounds mm-hmm. like the, uh, actually going back to our list. There's the, a few uh, rookies out here that's primed that could have good years. Uh, one of them being, what's his name, uh, Jesperi Constanemi? That's a new Emmy, yeah. uh, for the Canadians, yeah. He actually apparently made the team. Huh? And uh, then you have Brady to Chuck on Ottawa. Uh, did he make the team? Yeah. Oh, I mean, fuck, who do, they, who do they have? Of course yeah. he made the team. Um, but then on the Oilers, you have Kyler, Yamamoto, and Evan Bouchard playing. Uh, have they made the team with this? As of right now, they're still on the team. Um, That's good. We're recording on the Tuesday. As of tomorrow morning, they're in Cologne, Ger- Germany to play the Cologne Sharks. The Colon. The Colon Sharks. Who I've actually been to a home geek to. Well, there you go. And who are also being coached by Mr. Dreisaitl. Yeah. Kind of small world, right? Eh? It's a Dreisaitl versus Dreisaitl matchup. Fight. Yeah. Um, Tom Wilson. Now we mentioned that earlier. Should we talk about it? The hit? That was brutal. Yeah. That guy needs to serve some serious time. That was, like, this is his fourth offense. Well, like, I'm, I'm assuming at least a 10-game suspension to absolutely. start the season. And the one thing I found really weird is every time I looked it up, for some reason they have comments from Sidney Crosby. It's like, it's those two teams are rivals. Why would you ask him? You know he's going to be like, of course. You also want to know a little tidbit about Sidney Crosby that came out this last week? He's bisexual. No, Newfoundland uh, flat out said they will not name a street after Sidney Crosby until he retires. Why would Newfoundland? Or sorry, uh, not Nova Scotia. Yeah, Nova Scotia. Yeah, so I like it. As soon as he retires, he's gonna get a street named after him. Hopefully, it's a street in the red light district. That's where he belongs. Because that's all he gets is lighting that red lamp. Hopefully, it's a street that doesn't know how to take a hit. <laughs> or maybe it's where all the whiners are complaining. Yeah, maybe. Um, so I've got something here about the the Leafs and uh, William Nylander. Apparently, the Carolina Hurricanes were. Sniffing around, seeing if they could get him. Yep. Uh, but uh, the GM Kyle Dubas is made, wants to make clear that also he does a not. Gigantic wrestling fan, by the way. I, I do respect that. Yeah. Just not the team he works for. Uh, but he's a he has no intention of dealing mm-hmm. William Nylander. So in response to this, they put uh, the Leafs also put two goalies onto the uh, waivers well, to have him go down, and both of them got claimed. One by the Hurricanes, Curtis McKellen McKellen Same thing. Whatever. <laughs> Damn German names. He's, I know it's Irish. He's Canadian. Same thing. Anyways, McLean. And the Philadelphia Flyers claimed Calvin Picard. Yeah. That's so weird. Calvin Picard got picked up off waivers by Flyers from the Leafs. And yet all I can picture him as is a Colorado Avalanche. Well, the, the, one, of the, one of the reasons why uh, Carolina made that claim, though. Get him back? No, uh, Darling is out for at least a few weeks. Oh, not my darling. Mm. Oh, my darling. But uh, here's here's another thing, though, too. If Carolina wants Nylander so bad, why not offer sheet him? I 
don't know why they're not. I don't know. Because you can offer Nobody it. has. I don't know why. I think, one, I think people are scared to lose the draft picks. Um, worst case, give them like a six mil, seven mil. If, Munch, if Toronto matches it, that works in your favor for next year when there's a Marner and a Matthews. Work for the double M. The M&M. Huh. Um, no, double M and the AM. Yeah. Uh, the Leafs also traded Connor Carrick to the Stars for a conditional 7th round draft pick yeah. this season. And that 7th turns into a 6 if he plays 50 games with them. Yeah, and that's exactly the same type of deal that the Oilers traded uh, Jacob Yerebeck to the St. Louis Blues for because it was a conditional 6th. If he plays 50 games, it becomes a 5th round pick. There we go. And then the Oilers also put Pontus Aberg on the waiver wire and he was claimed by the Anaheim Ducks. Motherfuckers. Um, and then Sam Gagne on the waiver wire. And Vancouver's general manager says that if he goes unclaimed, which I think he did, they will try to find him a place to where he can play closer to home and be with his actual family for the upcoming so, season. Toronto. Yeah, in the Toronto area. Mm. Buffalo it is. Trade them to the Hamilton Bulldogs. Oh, wait. They're not AHL anymore. <laughs> That'd be awkward. Um, the Hurricanes brought back the Whalers jersey. They're going to use it once, December 23rd of this, se- of this year. Yeah. And I really want one. I already have a Whalers jersey. Well, fuck you then. It's a navy blue, though. But You know what? Either one of them look nice. Huh? They actually brought out the, uh, the lime green. Yes. Like when one of the teams I created on NHL 18. Yeah. Definitely the Whalers. Yeah, I made the Whalers in that game as well. But my, here's my thing, though, too. Um, the one thing I just, I get, but I don't get. Um, I can understand when you unveil a jersey that you have the team's name and then the year, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people are doing that. But when you have a flat-out player debut on the jersey. Like the captain? Yeah. Why not have his name on that jersey? Because that would make sense. Like. It's just weird to see Whalers on the back when you know it's Justin Williams. Yeah, I agree. Coburg's own Justin Williams. My hometown. Justin Williams. But yeah, and it's weird the fact that they, they show it in such a way so it looks like 11 even though he's clearly wearing 19. Yeah. That's weird. Which is also weird because... Well, of, no, because uh, 18's on the jersey. Oh, wait, is it 18? Yeah, okay. it's 18 on the jersey. Uh, maybe I saw 19 or something else. But anyways. Um, yeah, it, that is strange. A uh, couple of uh, injuries to talk about. Yep. We have um, the uh, Blue Jackets, defenseman Seth Jones. He'll be out four to six weeks due to a sprained knee uh, during a preseason game is when he got it. Uh, Kings forward Dustin Brown is out indefinitely after the club announced vet- a veteran suffered a broken finger in the team's final preseason game. I want to know. I mean, yes, it's, it's a finger, and a broken and whatnot, but broken finger, you're out indefinitely? Well, if you can't I've move, had a broken finger. If you can't move it, you can't grip the stick. I I guess. Yeah, I guess it depends on what finger. Yeah. If it's a thumb or... Yeah, I, I guess I can Thumb's actually pretty severe. Yeah. Um, Corey Perry has uh, ha- has to have surgery to repair, repair mis- meniscus and MCL injury in his, uh, I think his left knee. So mm-hmm. he's in at least 20 weeks or about five months. So there's that. And then... Uh, Where's the other one I have here? Uh, Bruins, D-man Tori Krug suffered a uh, left ankle injury and is set to be reevaluated up to three weeks wearing a walking boot. Is there anyone else you know about? Well, for the weather, you know, you know Sekera is out. Yes. Probably till at least January, they're saying. At least, if not more. Um, well, I mean, here's the thing. With this kind of injury, it might take him to January to, you know, be healed from it but it's going to also be an injury where he needs to take double amount of time off just to get it back to you know where it should be in january the weather's in a good position they're trying to prime themselves for a good positioning for a playoff run you know that's the hope so you're asking this guy now to come back in that form and he has to be at the top of his game instead of trying to get back into shape and i just think that's a wrong scenario so I think it's better off if he was to miss the entire season and come back for next season. And even if the Oilers do make the playoffs, let that guy play in the World Championships instead. Fair enough. And let him play in that to get his feet underneath him. I like it. 
Uh, have you heard about what's going on in uh, Philadelphia with uh, Yori Let- uh, Letera? Well, apparently he's been charged with something, and he's saying he is not involved. I think it's a drug ring or something? Yes. Ron wow. Hexall was saying that he will not... Uh, or the Philadelphia Flyers are dealing with a matter involving Yori Letna, and they have contacted the NHL about the situation, and that is possible involvement in a cocaine like drug trafficking ring in Finland. And it's his, quote, summer home, end quote. But people, he, people apparently actually got arrested at his house, and like he was actually arrested and I guess charged. But no, he has not been charged. Oh, has not been charged. Has okay. not been charged. I know he actually was arrested and like you know questions about questioned about it, but they let him go. And he's saying that he has nothing to do with it. He had no idea. So that's Finland. Apparently, is a good place to be. Apparently, All right. sounds like a party place. Um. Also, have you seen the caps? Uh, uh, new rings, the uh, yeah. Silicon rings. I like them. A lot of people hate them, but I like them. They're very colorful. I like it because it's colorful. It's awesome. Has a player's name on one side, the Stanley Cup champions on the other side. The inside's engraved with the series wins. And, yeah, which most have. But still, it's nice. I like it. Uh, Scott Hartnell has also just recently retired after 17 seasons. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize he was that old. I mean, I knew he was in his 30s. I just didn't realize he was 37, 36, something like that. Um, so... Yeah, it was a good career for him. And Caroline Ouellette retired after 20 years, after 20-year career and four Olympic golds. Oh, uh, this just in. The Canucks loaned Gagne to the AHL Marlies. Interesting. Yeah. Do you think he's getting ready to wind down a career? Well, he's played about, what, 13 years? He's the same age as Tavares, I think. So, yeah, about, maybe... 12, yeah. 10, 10, 12 years. Um, also, Mike Green sidelined for at least a week, uh, at least a month, sorry, due to a virus. That virus is going around. Uh, Alex Dabrinkat actually just uh, got over, is getting over it. Uh, and then Zetterberg to draw a puck in his home opener. Well, that's cool. Um, I actually have uh, something here I want to affectionately refer to as a milestone marathon. It's uh, a bunch of these players can break. Uh, milestones this year. So we have Thornton. He's on the edge of 400 goals. Oh, you want to know a big thing about Jordan? He shaved his beard off today. <gasps> that motherfucker. He's never going to get those and, three goals. And uh, I'm going to show you a photo. He looks like fucking 10 years younger. Yeah, I know. That's creepy. Uh, but yeah, he needs three goals to get 400. And if he gets 40 points, he can pass Team Mussolini and Stan Makita for 14th all time. On the points list, if he manages to collect 34 assists, he'll move up four spots, passing Marilyn Lemieux, Marcel Dion, Gordy Howe, and Steve Eiserman for eighth most assists all time. Who else do we have? Um, uh, Genny Malkin. Uh, he's looking to eclipse the 1,000 point plateau, and all he needs this year is 70 points, which he seems to have gotten the last several years. So, it's doable. Uh, if Malkin can put up 30 goals, he can also reach the 400 goal mark. So who's going to get it first, Thornton or Malkin? Malkin. <laughs> Good call. Uh, Lalongo currently sits at fourth on the all-time win list, but he could uh, leap thir- leapfrog leapfrog to third with 14 wins. He'd move past Ed Belfour. And Eric Stahl is also in the hunt for 400 goals. He needs five. So the more realistic question, who gets it, Stahl or Thornton first? Stahl. Yeah. Especially with 42 goals last year, I could definitely see it happening. Um, Lundqvist is also looking to yeah, make... but here's also a tidbit. Thornton has Carlson, who could be giving him the puck now. That's true, and Burns, the two of them. He, I think he's definitely going to get the assist. I just don't know about... The... And I think he will get the goals this year too. He I is just... an assist guy, though. More yeah, than a goal. I was guy. Say, I, he'll he'll definitely get the three goals. I just I don't know how long it'll take. And depending on how Stall plays at the beginning, he looked good in preseason. So, uh, Lundqvist will be looking to make a jump in the all-time rankings. He is currently sitting eighth all-time, uh, on 431 career wins. But with 24 victories, he could take over. He could overtake Jacques Plante, Terry Sawchuk, and Curtis Joseph for fifth. Which. I think even with a team that was that terrible, he got 26 last year. So I think it's very doable. So those are all the milestone. Um, that's the milestone marathon. 
That's all I have to say about that. What are you showing me? I'm showing you a gift. <laughs> I like it. Of a Photoshop of them just removing Thornton's beard. I like it. Uh, what else do I have? That's all I have for hockey. You have anything else? No, that's what I'm looking up. Um, I believe it's Clayton. I don't know what's his name. Barrett Hayton. Fifth overall pick will begin his young season with the Arizona Coyotes as he had officially made the team. Who's that now? Uh, Arizona's uh, fifth overall pick. And his name is what now? Barrett Hayton. Never heard of him. He's probably just gone. So, um, I'm just looking up. Um, the caps uh, officially have been engraved on the Stanley Cup. Hooray! For How dented world. is it? Um, from this angle, not so much. No, that's good. Um, but it looks to be a couple scratches. Fair enough. Um, what else? Uh, Sabres Nylander among final camp cuts. Really? So yeah. well, I guess he's the younger one though. I'm yep. Just... He can go back to the with OHL, I think. He played. Yeah, I think that actually probably does do it for the NHL this week. Well, lucky for you, I got some baseball to follow up with. Yay! September 26th was declared John Gibbons Day in Toronto. Who cares? And Russell Martin was actually named skipper for their f- season finale, yeah. which I think is kind of funny. Yeah. Um, and they lost. And Of course they did. So. Uh, the Astros' Robert Osuna had the assault charges against him withdrawn in Toronto court last Tuesday after agreeing to a peace bond, which I have no idea what that means. 23-year-old must comply with a series of conditions for one year or he will face criminal charges and possible imprisonment, which could carry out a max sentence of four years. So I guess he has to, you know, stay straight and fly right or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then the only thing I have for baseball is the draft order for the MLB is sorted. Do we want to go through that? Or do no. You but yesterday, they, well, October 1st, had uh, two games to actually tie or to understand, to break the tie for the uh, who won their divisions. You As we had Milwaukee defeat the Chicago Cubs 3-1 to take that NL Central Division. And the Dodgers defeated the Colorado Rockies 5-2 to take the NL West Division. Which I believe the Rockies and the Cubs are playing right now. Yeah, and it's tied 1-1 going into the ninth inning. Oh, it was one nothing in the fifth when we were in uh, first round. So. Interesting. Um, I think the only ones we need to know for, I guess, the uh, the MLB is that uh, uh, the Blue Jays are picking 11th. We, even with their terrible record, they still aren't near the bottom, which is the Orioles at 47 and 115. Well, because didn't they still beat Baltimore, and didn't they come close to beating Tampa Bay too? Yes, I believe so. Um, any other teams? Is there any team you want to know? Any? I guess your uh, your boy that plays in the Nationals, they're p- picking 17th. Yeah. And uh, they don't know if Bryce Harper will be coming back. Interesting. This could be a... Uh, and there was rumors that both Machado and Harper could be going to the same team somewhere. Interesting. So, yeah, free agency might be... Well, it's probably going to be a gong show because you're going to see ridiculous contracts being thrown out. Yeah. But it could be entertaining. Some big names could be moving. That's that's what we like for MLB because we don't really give a fuck. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I have for football is Packers are, have signed or were planning to sign cornerback uh, Bashan Breland. I guess one of their guys got hurt. That's yeah. literally all I got for football. I know that. Monday could mark a huge event for your team, but we won't get into until it happens next week. Well, I mean, let's just say that Drew Brees is only 200 yards shy of the all-time passing record held by Peyton Manning. Um, He will be playing Monday Night Football against the Washington Redskins. uh, Where he will only get 199 yards. Where I have predicted week five from the beginning, so looks be right. Um, Yeah. Life is good for a Saints fan as we took our division uh, back into place as the Buccaneers got thumped by the Chicago Bears. Duh, Bears! Um, 
And their season only is about to get worse because they named Jameson Winston their starting quarterback. <laughs> Why? Because they're Tampa Bay. Fair enough. Um, the Atlanta Falcons lost again, which was a little bit of all right. Hooray. Um, and then we saw Carolina with the bye. So with the 3 and one record, the New Orleans Saints are in first place. Hooray. I'm going to also go on record saying I am probably one of the worst fans ever of football because my second favorite team for football is the Chicago Bears, a rival of the Green Bay Packers. Really, I am really stupid when it comes to football. In the yeah, NFL. but they're in first place, so. Yeah. But really, it's, I don't know what it is. Something I just, I can't hate on Chicago teams. Even the White Sox. Like, I kind of like them. I like the Cubs. Obviously, I like yeah. the Blackhawks. And uh, if I had to pick a team for basketball that wasn't the Toon Squad, I'd probably have to pick the Bulls. Come on. That's, any, any Chicago team in my, in my books is, is all right with me. Um, what more do we have for football? Oh, I have one. It's kind of a hypothetical. Yep. What if, you know all the, the Madden NFL games, yep. how Belichick is like the only person that refuses to be in the game, that to use some like, random person? Well, the reason is, is because he refuses to pay like some fee to join uh, this club to where uh, his likeness is to be used. So he just Wouldn't ref- he get paid for that, though? Um... Probably, but he just doesn't care about video games. So. No, fair enough. But no, my here's my thing. Seeing as he doesn't want to do that, auction off Belichick's likeness. So that way when you see they show the bench for the coaches, auction it off so you can see yourself as the head coach and all the money goes to, you know, insert charity name here. So to the, whoever gets the highest bidder over a certain amount of weeks, EA Sports will take your face and everything else, or, render it, or and put you into the game. Instead of that, can you just give that money to the Pittsburgh Steelers so they can finally just pay Le'Veon Bell? Why would you do that? Especially for you, you're not you're not a fan of Pittsburgh. No, but I am a fan of Le'Veon getting paid as he is their best player. Well, that's maybe he'll just go somewhere else. Well, funny thing is, Bell plans for reported Steelers during the Week 7 bye. There you go. So my thing is, I don't know if necessarily he wants to stay in Pittsburgh or if he wants to get in shape and hope that a trade is to happen because there has been talks that a Le'Veon Bell trade could occur in the next few weeks. Well, there we go. There we go. I, I, I must admit, the little bit of football that I do watch, it would be kind of nice to be able to see Le'Veon Bell, but, you know, I'm not hardcore enough. I'm like, yeah, pay the man. It's like, eh, if he doesn't doesn't get paid, he doesn't get played. Well, his thing is, like, he's been getting, uh, what, he's been getting franchise tagged for a few years. Which means yeah. that you only get a certain amount, yeah. right? Um, and the thing is, is, like, he's not, and it's only one year, so there's no job security either. So what he wants is he wants that job security, and then he also wants to get paid. Because in football, it's a very contact sport. You can get hurt very easily. He Basically, what, does it mean that he wants like more of a guaranteed? Well, and that's the thing. And then they get their guarantee money when they sign. Yeah. So, I mean, you can't fault him for wanting to be protected from a financial Because, I mean, aspect. really, it takes one hit and he can be done. Yeah. Um, not to mention, he has proven his worth time in and time out. He didn't even have a contract going into this year, and he's still a top three pick for fantasy football. That's just how good he is. Even if he doesn't play for the first couple weeks, and then he's in, you want him on your team. Fair enough. Um, so, yeah, that's just a, it's just a thing there. Yeah. Well, I have a Managan D Award of Excellence winner this week. Okay. His name, you may have heard of him, Bob Cole. Bob Cole. Bob Cole. He's actually coming back into the booth for his 50th season with uh, Hockey Night in Canada this year. That's legendary status. Yeah, but I kind of wish he didn't. He's only doing 10 games, though. Yeah, and they're probably all Leaf games. You're not wrong. He do, he's doing the, let's see, doing 10 games uh, starting with Montreal, oh, Montreal versus Pittsburgh, October 6th. So he's probably going to do all Eastern Canada teams, which that's fine. 
But still, the fact he's doing his 50th, I bet you this will be his last Is one. Is he doing any Edmonton games? I have no idea. It isn't mentioned that one so far. No. I'm going to say probably not. Well, because you'd think if you got Bob Cole to announce Hockey Night in Canada, he should announce the best Canadian hockey player in the game right now. That's why he's doing Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I've got <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Matt Murray. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, you know Feel the thrill. Yeah. It's impressive, though. At 85 years old, he's still going. So, uh, Bob Cole, my night can be a word of excellence goes to you. A winner is you. How about wrestling? Um, I'm just seeing if there's anything else in the world of sports that we should talk about. Wrestling. Uh, yeah, this Saturday, you got Conor McGregor against Khabib. Khabib, you fuck. I know. It bugs you so much. Say it properly, you son of a bitch. So, so okay. Kahib and Connor. I will murder your face. Uh, yeah, predictions. I don't know. If it stays upright, Connor. If it goes to wrestling, Khabib. What will happen? I don't know. I really don't. I want actually. This is the first UFC fight in a long time. Like fuck, I I have to watch this. Yep. Um, I'm gonna say in the second round we're gonna see a knockout from. Kahib. You fuck. God damn it. Say it right. <laughs> say his last name. I'd have to look at it. Yeah. yeah Nurbergendorf? Right. Something like that, yeah. It's ridiculously long Chechen name. Is um, it, is it <clears throat> Russian? No, uh, Chechen. Chechen sure. is, a, is a form of Russia. It's a kind of, it's in Russian area. I don't know where. I don't get it. Yeah, I'm pretty it's sure like, he's It's Russian. like a province of Russia or something like that. Do they even have... Uh, anyway, let's go into wrestling. Uh, SmackDown 1000 is going to have Evolution back together, and then they're going to go do their own pay-per-view. How cool is that? Yeah. But no, it's finally Batista's actually been confirmed. He's actually going to be back. So that's cool. I don't know what they're going to do, but I mean, that's that's cool. Um, Liv Morgan suffered a concussion after getting kicked in the face by Brie Bella. And it's... Nurmagom, or I don't, what does that say? Nurmagomedov, something like that, yeah. Nurma, yeah, Nurmagomedov. Yes. So, you have any thoughts on Liv Morgan getting kicked in the face? Um, I thought it was hilarious. I didn't. I thought it was very sloppy of Brie Bella. I uh, yeah, sloppy, but I mean, funny. she's been back for how many weeks, and she still can't jump outside of a ring and wait till somebody gets up to kick them. Yeah. And then it's not only she kicked them one in the face. The very next thing is just another like spastic kick in the face. It's like, your husband could be one of the greatest technical wrestlers ever. Of all the time. Um, and you can't learn how to work from him? <laughs> Jesus Christ, go back to your baby. And she's getting a lot of hate now. A she lot of should. Hate but you know what? I'm finding it really hard to defend her because lately she and Nikki have both been fucking terrible. You know why you can't defend they're her? Because they're too busy kicking you in the face. And dangerous. Yeah. But yes. You know who can work? Cody, yeah. who just won the IWGP United States Championship from Juice Robinson, yeah. so he's a dual he's a dual cha- wielding title holder. He's got, technically got three. I don't know what that would make him. He's got he has the hat trick. Yeah, he's got the NWA Heavyweight uh, title. Does he have the Ring he's of Honor Six Man? This is Ring of Honor Six Man title and the IWGP United yeah. States Championship. He's got all the titles. He's got three titles in three different companies. Cody three belt. Yeah. Cody 3 Pete. Cody 3 Pete. How about uh, John Cena has a children's Ooh. book? Ooh. What? Three Bell Cody. Three Bell Cody. I like it. Uh, John Cena has a children's book dropping October 9th. I don't know what it is, but I'm sure it's going to sell a lot. For a guy who never wanted kids, he spends a lot of time either with them or writing about them. You know, or making movies for them. You know yeah. why? Because he knows that kids sell. Also in the third world black market. Yeah. <laughs> That was dark. Let's move on from that. On a serious, a serious note, why don't we have a kid's book? Because we're offensive. Okay, why don't we have an adult book? Because... Uh, why don't we have a Karma Sutra book? Why don't we have a coloring book? Because we only know Adult one, coloring books. We only know one position. That's just how to get off. And over. Yeah. Um, okay, hypothetically, we have a book. <laughs> What's it called? What's it about? Things. How to... Okay. It is called the book... Struggleicious. 
a message to find it. Or a message to show that everyone is a little bit of all right. I like it. Is it, is it a kid's book or is it kind of like an all-age book? You know, it could be an all-age book and it's talking about how just, you know... How Strugglicious, the uh, the happy panda, finds his way and... Everyone in this world has a little bit of Strugglicious in them. And they're all a little bit of all-right. And right. because of that, everyone in this world is a little bit of all-right. Therefore, Tag Struggle makes the world a happier place. Except for Sean Martins, because yeah. he's a fuck. Yeah. And that's exactly how we'll end the book. Just to, you know, appeal to <laughs> yeah. the, the teens. The Except nicest. For Sean Martins. That fuck. Yeah. Just, yeah. I like it. That's what we'll do. That's that's how we'll end it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm game with that. Yeah. So we just we just wrote a book. Publish it. Yeah. Um, Nicole Matthews has been banned from entering the United States for five years for working a show on a travel visa instead of a work visa. My question is to you, Mr. Parrish. Yeah. Did she know? And if she did... Whose fault is it? Well, I'm sure she probably did know she, that she was on a travel visa. My thing is, if you have a chance to work for WWE, you do it. Yeah, because I guarantee even though she clearly is not going far in the tournament. My issue is just how stupid it is for Canadian workers to go over the United States border. And it doesn't seem like it's going to get any easier with Donald Trump as president. I don't think it matters who's president. They just, they want their own first. Well, I mean, Donald Trump has been the most vocal about people going across the border. That's true. And any other president. Also, I just think it's absolutely stupid because they have no problem wanting to come to Canada and have a living. But the other way around is, you know, just atrocious. But, I mean... On the silver line to this is although it sucks she can't work for WWE and won't be able to until she's like 37. Yeah. Doing that will get her bookings in Japan and Mexico. Well, I think she's already, yeah, taking some bookings in Japan. So, I mean, it's helped her that way. Hopefully she can build her name enough and hopefully she has longevity to be able to keep doing that and like get in WWE mm-hmm. afterwards. That's and, uh, my hope. Apparently, uh, if she was to go work in, say, I don't know, New Japan, I mean, there could be, you know, an inva- like an introduction to, you know, some more women's wrestling out there. Yep. Because um, she's already part of, what is it, Shimmer or Shine? I mean, she could also work for Impact, which is located in Canada now. It's very true. So. She definitely could. And maybe she will. Yeah. Wouldn't be a bad, who are apparently no longer enemies with the WWE. Yeah, it seems like they really bad the hatch there. Yeah. Um, shall we go on to the predictions of Super Showdown, which is happening this technically Saturday morning at like 3 in the morning for us? Yeah, might as well. All right. This is in no particular order. It's whatever is going off of Wikipedia. First match it has, Triple H with Shawn Michaels versus Undertaker with Kane. Can go with Undertaker. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Do you think we have a return match when Michael... You? Do you think we have a return match when Michaels gets in the ring? I think Michaels and Undertaker will probably happen at Survivor Series. But why? We don't or at least them. a tag match. But we don't need him to get back in the ring. That's my next thing. Is like we don't need Shawn Michaels to get back in. Well, and if he do, he's retired, stay retired. And if he is going to go back in the ring, that's not the match people want to see him in. No, we want to see him versus Loki. Or David Arquette. That I would pay good money. Actually, a triple threat. David Arquette versus uh, Shawn Michaels versus Sting. No, I take it back. Not Sting. Uh, the Boogeyman. Actually, I would like to see Hogan versus Sting versus uh, Michaels and just see who out of the three have had the worst loss of hair in their middle-aged years. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I think, personally, I think Triple H is going to win it. They, they make such a big deal that I think Triple H is going to finally do it and then he's going to retire on Triple H. Well, my, my big thing is uh, The Undertaker is probably going to be super over at this show. Probably. Um, And I can only see it happen where they do some with Undertaker winning, but it still sets everything up. Okay. Fair enough. Um, second match. 
Am I reading this right? Probably not. Bobby Lashley and John Cena versus Elias and Kevin Owens. Yeah. Really? No. Okay, well, John Cena and Bobby Lashley. Then. Oh, yeah. 100%. That's, yeah. yeah Gonna go see John Cena and Kevin Owens for the pin. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Oh, and this is for the last match, uh, Triple H on Kane for the pin. This is what I predict. I know he's not part of the match. I don't care. Um, Danny Bryan versus The Miz, where the whoever wins is number one contender. I think this is where Bryan finally wins. See, I... Oh, I'll say Bryan wins if Joe wins the title. But if AJ continues with the title, The Miz will have it. Fair enough. That, that's fair. I, I agree to that. Um, I... I personally would like to see The Miz get it. I also, I, I think Miz actually winning the title from uh, AJ if Samoa Joe doesn't do it, I think would be yeah. awesome. No pun intended. Um, what about Shield versus Strowman, Ziggler, and McIntyre? Shield. Yeah. I, I don't, yeah. I don't really think we need to go into uh, that anymore. I think that's just, yeah. Um, oh, great. We have a triple threat for the Universal title. The next one it has here is the Bella Twins and Ronda Rousey versus Riot Squad. Someone wake me when I start to give a fuck. I hope the Riot Squad wins this match. I just don't care about five of the six women in this match. Yeah. I'm a huge Sarah Logan fan. Yeah, me too. <laughs> no, like Ronda Rousey has the title. Okay, cool. But the Bella Twins, they've, as we've talked about, are dangerous, and I just... You know what? I'm, ac- I'm actually going to say a, a one good thing about uh, Ruby Wright. Um, the way she handled herself and the way she handled Liv Morgan when that match was occurring, when she was kicked in the face and concussed, she handled that like a pro, um, and I, I didn't. I didn't that. see what happened. She pretty much rolled Liv Morgan back in went into the pin and then or to get in the match and pretty much took her out when you can tell there was serious confusion between Bree and Liv Morgan after that because no. Liv was knocked out um, and then there was a second part in the match where Sarah Logan was to slingshot Bree into the ropes that Ruby was standing on no. and then Ruby was to give her a shot Bree Bella just came up and smoked her for no reason. So basically botching that spot and Ruby still never actually took that back out and was professional over it. So oh, well, there you go. I actually will give I, her I never saw that. It's uh, it's on my yeah. list of things to watch, possibly probably so. not. Um I think it's gonna be Ronda Rousey and the Bella Twins. Mm. Um yeah. I I don't wanna sound sexist because it's women's wrestling, but I just out of the well, that's six not, women in this match, I just don't care. That's the match that doesn't... Like, you could have picked a lot better. Like, why is an Ember Moon in this match? Why Why are the Bellas taking spots over some acts already on Raw? Yeah. Uh, like anyways. Natty and Ember Moon. Yeah. There you go. That's your team. Yeah. Anyways, uh, that, neither here for that. Yeah. Uh, AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. No count on disqualification match for the WWE Championship. I don't know. This literally could go either way. I want Samoa Joe. I think, I think Samoa Joe's going to win it here. Maybe just because AJ's had it for a while. And he's lost twice when facing AJ Styles before. So why not do a title change here? I think Make this, it big. I think this is the perfect time to take the title off AJ. Have AJ win the Royal Rumble and have a move to Monday Night Raw. I like it. But I mean, like, it just to me, there. I feel like... I don't think there has to be a title change, but there could be. Mm-hmm. And if it's not this one, it's definitely going to be the next one of Cedric Alexander versus Buddy Murphy for the Cruiserweight title. He's from Australia. Yep. That would be a good story. My I thing, could definitely see them do that. My thing is I don't know if they will push the button on taking the title of Cedric Alexander right now. Unless this all leads to Buddy Murphy and Mustafa Ali. And Which could who knows? Um, and we also have the New Day, which is Big E, Kofi Kingston, and, and or Xavier Woods. 
in case you know who New Day was. Yeah. Versus Cesaro and Sheamus for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. Yeah. I I figure New Day will... Uh, this may, Maybe this is the one that they switch title on. I, I just have a feeling at least one title is being changed on the show. Because they don't go down there a ton. They're going to give them something. But they didn't do that on Saudi Arabia. No, but that doesn't mean that they won't do it here. But that doesn't also mean that they will either. Because no, Survivor true. Series is the next one, and that's a bigger pay-per-view. Is there not one before Survivor Series? No, well, the Evolution, I guess. No, Evolution, I guess, then Crown Jewel is also, like, the first or something like that. Yeah. So. All right, well, well, I I don't know. I just I feel like there is going to be title to change hands. Although I did feel like that for... Uh, um, the uh, Saudi Arabia show as well. And technically, a title did change hands. No, it didn't. It went from vacant to Braun Strowman for the Saudi Arabian Championship. Was vacant? No, because it was never really vacant. It just never had a champion. It's created. If it doesn't have a champion, it's vacant. Vacant was... I mean... Okay, brand new, never had a champion to champion. Well, the funny thing is about Vacant, he was actually eliminated right before Titles O'Neil actually fell into the apron. Is that why Titus O'Neil tripped? Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, so when he got thrown over, he actually tripped Titus O'Neil. Fair enough. I mean, um, little known fact. Yeah, there. We're breaking down the fourth wall here, yeah. folks. Yeah. Um, next match on here is Asuka and Naomi versus Iconics. I feel like the Iconics are going to win because they're both from Australia. It just makes sense. They're going to get cheered there. I don't think they will. You don't think so? Uh, I think. I guess you're right. Vince does have a sick sense of humor of making people lose at home. And I think they're both actually from Melbourne too. I could be wrong about that, but you you might be right. I think that'll be funny because it'll be interesting to see Oscar and Naomi work as heels because there's no way they're gonna be faces. They might be though. They might have the Iconics come out and annoy the crowd and just say how they're better than Australia. Yeah. But then, you never know. It's yeah. Australia. Yeah. It's kind of like Bizarro, Canada, but, you know, south. Yeah. And they like um, polar bears a lot more than we do. Well, it's because they have them. Yeah. Uh, Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair. Oh, I think Becky retains. Yep. And that's all for that. It's funny how uh, they want Ronda Rousey to be this fighting champion, but she's not defending her title at a big show like this. It's because she's defending her title at Evolution. So... No, against who? I don't fucking know. Is that it? That's all I got, but... Well, it feels uh, very underwhelming. We did an hour, didn't we? Not yet. Well, with, with music and stuff, it'll be an hour. <laughs> um, yeah, right now, take a second, go into our comments section, or like the part that talks about the show. You can look up Backbreaker Media on all the all the devices. Uh, Whatamaneuver.net, get our t-shirts. Oh, uh, which by the way, um, stemming from the last show in uh, PPW. Which was last week. But by the way, how did that go? Well, I mean, let's just say one... Let's br- talk about that for one a minute. Bradley Graham tried, or got his, stuck his nose in my business. Yes. Costing me a shot at the PPW Heavyweight Championship. But my... Old friend Sidney Steele yes. decided this ain't gonna happen. It's too many two on ones. How do you guys fare when the odds are two against two? So next show, their Halloween show, which is one of their big shows, we're gonna see a tag match. But not just any tag match, because for one night only, we're gonna reunite One World Empire. And if you wow. need to represent One World Empire, go to oneummaneuver.net. No, they're no longer retro WE. Yeah. They are current OWE for the next mm-hmm. month. I like it. So, yeah. Good stuff. Right on. That's uh, that's exciting. Yeah. That's exciting. So, I enjoy that. Huzzah. And uh, in the words of one Sydney Steel, apparently I've not grown up or changed at all since my the promo picture. Of OWE. Well, he's not wrong. <laughs> um, and then, if you want to do some research on you know, former OWE stuff, you can go to Powerslam TV or backbreakermedia.pivotshare.com. Look it all up there. Yeah. Do it. Do it. I fucking dare you. Yeah. And uh, coming up, what do we got, bud? Uh, well, I got 
Monster Pro Wrestling this Saturday. A tag match. I mean. Yeah. Don't worry, I get to beat up on Sean Martins. That's great that you get to beat up on him. I'm getting really sick and tired. I just want to make this very clear. For the whatever, what's what, what week are we in now since it was like July that this happened I got injured? I'm still not officially clear. I'm like, I'm turning into the Corey Crawford of this fucking promotion. I just, I will not be cleared. I don't have vertigo. I don't have headaches. I don't have ringing in my ear. There's no goddamn tinnitus. I can't get cleared. I'm seriously considering trying other options, going other places, because I'm getting very fed up with having to constantly be told, no, not this month. Check back in a month. I'm tired of every month. Hey, can you go for this test? Hey, can you go get this blood work done? No. Just clear me, damn it. I've had, I feel like Daniel Bryan right now. I've had three doctors. Yeah, you're good to go. And then, no, he's just, you know, he needs more time. I'm getting really sick of it. And, and this isn't just like, you know, hey, you know, storyline a lot. No, no. This is shoot. I'm getting, like, pissed. I'm starting to run out of ideas and starting to, like, you know what? Maybe I'm just going to go somewhere else because there are other fucking options here. Well, maybe you should eat a Snickers because you're not you when you're angry. You're fucking right I'm not. So why don't you just come to the show drunk because you're more normal when you're hammered. Ain't that the truth? I mean... You always go to the show sober, so maybe there's your first mistake. Yeah, you're right. I should show up drunk. Yeah. And for those asking, well, I know several people have been asking, I have been at the last two shows. Backstage and been told I can't wrestle, so I leave. I don't want to be there if I can't wrestle. It's frustrating. Yeah. So I don't even know if I'm going to go to this one. I might I might just meet with Mike Maloney after, uh, after I talk with him. You might reserve the table the first round after the show so we can watch Khabib and Connor. That I might do actually. That's not a bad idea. Uh, but for right now, I'm gonna. I have a plan to talk to him later on this week. If it doesn't go the way I want, I might just say to hell with it and just not go to the show and just look at options otherwise and within the city. Wait and see. But anyways, enough of that. Enough of that. You know, sad shit. Well, I mean, you really can't wait for your return. Yeah, me fucking too, man. So, um, so I think that does it for episode 95. Yeah, let's end on that note, I guess. So, I'm Chris Parrish. I'm a very snickered out and pissed off my eye. Why do I always get myself going like this? Whatever. Anyways, I'm an Um, and we're tag struggle. We're real. And like we, my head injury. And we are. Spectacular. That's a little bit of all right. Well, it's certainly struggle issues. Yeah. Um, and remember, when Ike isn't cleared, he might just say, Later, bitches! When your heart's pounding out of your chest, you can feel the shaking as you're running out of breath. If you're ready to run-